We want to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Crystal Smith. I work with the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service. As I said, I am here based in Washington, D.C. Um, welcome to today's webinar. We will be talking about the success of the Food and Beverage Committee at the Holly Koa Hotel in Hawaii. We want to thank you for joining us today for the success story. We are so excited to hear about learn from and discuss how labor and management work together to great success and a stronger relationship. And in other words, if you didn't catch the title of today's session, how they went from hockey pucks to a gourmet partnership. Now before I hand it over to the wonderful committee um, and the FMCS commissioner, Carol Katzenzeriti, and trust me, she says that so much better than me, I want to go over a few housekeeping items. Um, first, just so that everyone knows, we are going to be recording this session, and it will be uh, viewable for later viewing. But don't worry, anything that you guys type um, in the chat box will not be kept. No one else will be able to see that transcript. Um, and that also points me to the chat box, which many of you guys have already had an opportunity to become acquainted with. Thank you for giving me the feedback on the audio. I'm going to go ahead and clear that now to make way for any of your questions, or if there's ever a point in time where you guys can't hear something, or um, you know, the video goes out or something, you guys can communicate with us because your phone lines are muted on your end, but please do feel free to ask questions and it will be my job to read those questions to the um, committee and they can answer those. I will we'll let you know there's um, a lot of people on the call today and we probably won't be able to get to all of the questions. I do want this to be an interactive and they're happy to, um, to answer questions. Um, finally, I want to point out the file pod over there. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Um, in that pod are some brochures to the FMCS services. Carol will be talking about a few things, but um, if you want to know more about FMCS and what FMCS mediators can do for you um, and your organization, uh, download the FMCS brochures there and there's contact information, and we're happy to talk with you guys. Um, because we got a little bit of a late start, I don't want to belabor this anymore. I would like to turn this over to the very capable hands of Carol um, and the rest of that committee. Take it away, Carol. Oh, thank you. Aloha, everybody. I'm glad you're here to hear the success story for the Hale Koa, which means House of the Warrior uh, Food and Beverage Success Committee. And the committee decided to call it the success committee prior to it even being a success. Uh, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, this this um, story we're going to tell you is really about the relationship between management and union at the Hale Koa and facing two major issues. One is how do you make a success out of an outlet at a hotel that is struggling. The other is job security. Those are two very important things, I'm sure, to everybody out there. And this committee was able to deal with both of those things. We're going to talk about how this committee did that. Um, we, they, we titled it From Hockey Pucks to Gourmet Partnership because you will see later when they start talking about the menu, one of the changes they had to make about the dinner rolls. And the story is so good, I'm going to leave that up to the folks right here to talk to you about that. One of the other major points about this forum and this particular uh, web webinar is how do you make a committee that got together for a particular purpose sustainable? How do you keep it going through various issues that come up? and you'll see how and why. You'll also see the obstacles that the folks had to overcome. <coughs> and the last thing I want to share is um, these wonderful people that are around the table. I want to introduce them, or actually they will introduce themselves and say what their name is and what they represent, the union or management. So we'll start with Elena, who is to stage left. Hi, I'm Elena. I want to speak yeah. I've been at the hotel for 42 years. I'm also a union rep. I'm a shop steward. And um, I enjoy my job. <laughs> Hi, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. My name is Peter Gary. I'm the Human Resources Director at the Howie Koa Hotel. Hi, good morning. My name is Jerry King. I work at Bear Cliff Bar. I work in the beverage department as a server and also on Local 5 representatives as well. Hello and good morning. My name is Greg Wow. I'm the Beavis manager. I've been here for 28 years at the hotel. 
Thank you. And my name is Carol Catanzariti, as Crystal introduced. And I've been um, in Hawaii for 38 years and with Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service as a mediator for 19. Aloha and good morning. My name is Lavana Saladam. I'm the Coco at Kalia Restaurant Operations Manager at the Holly Koa Hotel. I work alongside Erlena um, in our operation and we're pleased to be here this morning to speak with you. Aloha, I'm Sai Hirotsu. I'm the Chief Financial Management Officer here at the hotel and uh, just love being on this committee. Aloha, I'm Jack Kapoor. I'm a server at the Beaver Restaurant. Greg Lau is my boss, and I'm a representative of Local 5. My name is Kevin Dugan. I'm the Director of Food and Beverage. I've been in the Halley Cole Hotel about four years, and I'm very proud of the accomplishments our committee has created. Uh, just to give you the basis of this committee, it started out as, and it still is, an Executive Order 13522 forum. Uh, that was an executive order passed in 2009 and is still in effect in case anybody out there is wondering. It is still in effect. Um, even if it were not in effect, many, many of the partnerships and forums that have been formed continue on their own because of their success in the past or even newly form if they want to resolve uh, any problems that they have through a committee format, through a labor management committee format. Uh, so the executive order 13522 is still in effect. I think that's an important thing to know. Uh, so what I want to do now, because, you know, I'm, don't get jealous, but we're in Waikiki, and, <laughs> and so I will talk about the location a little bit more, a little more in depth on Halekoa Hotel itself. Okay, so the Halikoa itself, um, we are on, as Carol said, right in the heart of Waikiki. We are, you know, why a hotel? We're actually owned and operated by the U.S. Army, and back in World War II and Vietnam era, you know, this area was used for rest and relaxation. Actually, down the road, it was actually mandated that this area will be used for morale, welfare, and recre recreation, and therefore the Army is uh, continuing to operate it. Just to give you an idea, we do reside on 72 acres in, the, in Waikiki, and if you take a look, we are literally, you know, having, we, we are the green space in Waikiki, and we're very proud of that. Um, right now, <coughs> we uh, actually have um, the hotel, if, if designated as an Armed Forces Recreation Center, and that occurred in 1975. You know, we have uh, 818 rooms. We are a very robust um, location here, and uh, right now, you know, hotels, food and beverage, we have the whole gamut of a full-service hotel. And Erlina, how many uh, members in the bargaining unit? Okay. Um, oh, yes, we have 500, approximately 500 members in um, the bargaining unit. And, and so how this became about actually I here was not the, the previous, was it the first union? We did have a previous union. And they were, they were within the government sector. And they didn't really know how to handle hotel operations. They were more like for trade, for machinists and things. So what what we did in 2006, we approached the Night Care Local 5, which is an expert at hotel operations. It also represents many hotels in Waikiki. And we voted on to have them be our union. And we actually ratified that. I mean, we actually voted in 2007, and that's how we 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 got the union anyway. But <coughs> what, what, we wanted, what we wanted to do is we wanted to we actually later on in the contract negotiations wanted to make a union management partnership. So. That's how it came because the union thought about it and introduced it in the negotiations. And 
if we follow the typical format for committees, there's always a problem and there's always a search for a resolution in labor management committees that have been trained and using the interest-based problem-solving process. So you'll see that you know, up on the screen, there's a, uh, you have a problem, you want to wipe it out, you want to have a solution. How do you get there? Uh, that's, it's not easy. And when there is financial issues at risk, when there is the relationship at risk, it takes a lot of concerted effort. And this committee will show you how they overcame their skepticism um, and how they <coughs> resolved the problem. And let's get to the problem. Um, Sai is going to talk more about the, in depth what the actual initial problem was with one of the outlets at the hotel. Okay. <coughs> you know, um, in, in a lot of hotel businesses, you know, that there's a food and beverage department that really complements the overall experience. So although um, our food and beverage department was profitable, and you know, again, without good food and beverage, you're not going to sell the rooms, which is our bread and butter. And, and just to let you know, we are running at a 99% plus occupancy all year long, all year long, and have been for many, many years. So what's the problem? I guess, as I mentioned, that although the food and beverage made a million dollars in a year, what happened is within those departments, we have some that are making money and some that are not. And, and once again, that complement to each other, you know, we need a fast food, you know, service. We need a sit-down restaurant. We want buffets. We want shows. We want it all but not everything makes money, but that, that just adds to the guest experience. What has happened, though, at a certain point is kind of the business model changed, and what we needed to do internally, which was a smart thing to do, is say, hey, everybody will be looked at on their own, and let's work on those that are not making money, and let's get them to either break even and be profitable. So you can see some outlets are doing very well, some are not. And, and you'll notice that, uh, just to explain right now, we did pick Biba's restaurant. Coco, Cafe, Coco at Kalia was going to be going under renovation. So we kind of put that on hold and went straight to Biba's. Kevin? <clears throat> like I said, you know, we started examining each of our, uh, these areas that were <coughs> losing revenue are losing profits back then. <coughs> just looking for efficiency. So, uh, we did pick Bevis as, as our priority to work together with the ultimate goal of uh, breaking even. And I'm proud to say we eventually did that in 2015, December 2015, and we'll explain the, uh, that story as we as we. When we started off, um, what, you know, what was the process? What really were the concerns? Because we've mentioned that there was some uh, skepticism, there were some obstacles. Well, the questions that came up are several, and Peter's going to start addressing a couple of them. Yeah, <clears throat> it, uh, you know, the first step to uh, the first step, you know, to uh, developing the success committee actually was a union proposal during contract negotiation. And, and Elena said earlier that you know, I hear Local 5 is predominantly a private sector union that represents other hotels in Waikiki, Hawaii. And we, I mean, we have some very big hotels here. So it's not a government sector union. So uh, because of problems that we've had in Bebo's, the Bebo's restaurant, we, had a, we, we, had, we uh, cut the operating hours uh, of just a fraction. We, uh, we looked at staff hours, so when operating hours get, when operating hours get reduced, staff hours get reduced. And we had some issues, so long-term issues, you know, that, that, that kind of boiled up. So the union proposed that we develop a success committee, and, and that started the process. So the, uh, the contract was actually agreed upon in, in June 2013, and we had our first committee meeting in December 2013. So no one really knew here what was going to be the outcome of that. So there was a lot of that. That was the, that was the first step in the process. Yeah, so... The formula of the partnership was a kind of a new thing because normally in businesses, management makes the bulk of the decisions. And so what was happening in the, in the food and beverage department, management was making all the decisions, and a lot of times those decisions were poor because 
they don't know the front of the line. They don't know what the guests, guests are actually saying. They don't know what the guests actually like. They can see the food going out, but they don't see the end result. Is it left on the plate or whatever? So what, what happened with this partnership, we had the people who have the expertise in management, in the data and, and you know, numbers and stuff, and you get the employees that come together and they give the input, what are you guessing, what is, what, what is happening, what, how, is, how are you um, dealing with when it's busy, you know, how can we make the experience for the guests better. So that's, that's what we did with this, having this committee, we were able to form this partnership and work together and and even though in the beginning it was hard because the hotel for years, 30 years maybe, didn't make all their decisions on their own. They didn't listen to us, the employees in the union. And so when we were, we were at our first couple meetings, we were tasked, let's go out and talk to them and ask them their opinions, ask them their ideas and suggestions. And what happened was they're saying like, no, no. We're not going to tell you nothing. They don't listen. They're not, you know, they're not going to listen to us. But it turned out, it was, it was just amazing for me, especially because I've been here for so long, to have them open up later as they saw the changes. Because we would come back to the table, we'd meet every month, and we would talk to, together, together as a partnership, and we would get things done. And they started seeing the things changing. And it was like, wow, they just started opening up. Oh, do you think that, you know, this would be better, you know? Can, they, can you tell them that, you know, the guests are saying this is a good item that they like? So that was what was really great of um, getting this Food and Beverage Success Committee started. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Elena, because until um, everybody on the committee understood the real dynamics of what it's like to be a a wait person, uh, seeing people return food. Um, um, there's a story about the rolls, um, especially the rolls, or not eat the rolls. Um, there was there was a serious look at well, why was that? And um, because you, the the staff, really knew what was going on, and management really began to listen. And I think that knowing that, and you've talked about this so many times, and um, you just articulated it very well. And that is, there was this backlog of distrust. And it takes a lot to overcome that distrust. So in preparing the committee, um, and, th and this would be the, the next slide, is how did they do it? Carol, Carol, I'm sorry, I just have one clarification question. Bill wanted to know um, whether or not the partnership committee was just for Beavis or was it for the entire hotel? Just clarification. It was, oh, you want to go? Well, I was say, you know, the, the, the yeah. goal was it, it's for the entire hotel. Yeah. Uh, but we had to pick a priority, and just the financial situation with Beavis kind of dictated that priority one. And there was a fear of, you know, if Beavis goes, what about the jobs? You know, the union was very concerned about losing jobs, and apparently in the past um, that had always hung over their heads. Exactly right. In fact, very early in our relationship, we just, uh, as we were picking, you know, what priority one is, and just the financial situation with Beavis, you know, it was uh, it was very obvious that it had to be priority one. And during that very first meeting, or one of the very first meetings, was you know, just financial transparency. We just put the numbers right on the table, talked about the facts, and unless we can save Beavis, right, that's a loss of jobs and just the domino effect that goes with that. So we had to work together to make that succeed. And again, we're, we're quite proud of uh, where we are today. And, it, you know, I think everybody understood that had to happen because you can't resolve something unless you know what the facts are. What, what are you trying to resolve? What are the details of it? And the committee overcame the concern about revealing that information because there was, a, there was also an agreement for confidentiality. In other words, let's not talk when we resolve something, then we can talk about it not too soon. Otherwise, it becomes rumor. Um, so the timing of all of that was really important, but the committee knew um, the details. Anybody else want to add to that? I Carolina? wanted to say the reason why Bebus would like to call it our pilot pilot project, and it was just a, a step into including everything, all the food and beverage. Because if we can learn from Bebus, we can, 
you know, we can try at Coco's. So it's not, we didn't only concentrate, yes, at the time, Vivas, but a lot of times it kind of carried over to the other because we saw these things were happening at Vivas. Let's, let's try maybe six Coco's. You know, it's like uh, it, a simple situation was the hostesses, were they feeding the people correctly, you know? So it, it, it made, we concentrated so we can have at least a, a one area where we can improve and later on we can learn from that and then improve someplace else. And so the pilot became a model. Yes. Basically. And the only way to, to answer that, that question as well is, you know, we, we had a lot of success in Beavis, but the truth is we had success in every division of food and beverage. Mm -hmm. Just the union management relationship, if you want to call it that, just improved grossly. And as a result, we benefited in every single outlet, which uh, ultimately generated uh, record revenues, record profits. Mm -hmm. and I, you know, it's important, you always have to ask yourself on the committee, folks on the committee, is why should I not reveal this piece of information if it's going to be germane to the discussion and actually help and move forward, help the uh, process move forward? So the, you can't have something like this without some kind of basis for training. So there was a two-day, two-time or two-day training, and it was an interest-based problem solving. Um, so that was the first step, and of course that outlines well, what is the problem we're facing? How can we define that? And the committee jointly identifies the problem. Uh, and can go yeah, sorry. And talk about like we're, we're like at the stage of negotiation, so that was actually a negotiated item. To so use interest base. Yeah, to have yeah. the committee correct. Maybe that's kind of where we're at right now. Yeah. Okay. So Peter, maybe? Yeah, and, and I think it would be helpful. I said, you know, you know, we, we talked about why Beavis, right, and what we were going to gain out of it. It was a learning experience for us. So during the negotiation, these were our concerns, right? And one of the concerns was can management and union partner together successfully to achieve success? So we didn't know. We really didn't know. Uh, but we agreed to it during the negotiations, and uh, we were going to sit down and, and see if we can make this thing work. So we, we picked a uh, pretty big but a single unit in order to develop our pilot program, like the Beavis Restaurant. And, uh, and, and I could say there's two key words in this that we were – and, and you know, that kind of support what Mr. Deegan said, you know, once we developed it, everything started to grow, uh, grow along with it. And that was trust, right, being able to trust each other, management and union. And the other one was the sharing of information, sharing and listening of information. So those are two very big ideas. So I said in order to, and that goes to any relationship, you know, you got to be able to have those ingredients in order to, to uh, develop and grow a relationship. And it worked out very well. And we've been doing it for over three years now, I believe, and it's, and it's still working out pretty well. So, so we, Elena mentioned there was a day when, Matt, when employees would not talk and we would not listen, management would not listen, and so employees would not talk. So we, we've blown past that. And, and uh, as to the employees that deal with the customers on a face-to-face, -face, on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, it was new to us because in the past, Management made all the decisions, like I'm sure, like in the many organizations. Um, and, uh, and if we believed that we had the right solution, we were just going to go with it. Right? So little input, we took an input on a, on a voluntary basis if we believed we wanted it or not want it, or if we didn't want it. So trust, trust building was very, very important. The other concern we had in the very beginning was, um, you know, we talked about the association who will sit on the committee. And, uh, and management believed that we should make the call like who sits on the committee, right? Because, you know, management should determine who sits on the committee, but in terms of when it was finally negotiated, it was said management will make their determinations and the union will make their determinations. So I said, okay, that was something new as well, too. But it worked out very well. Okay. Peter, what would you say led to the trust? Um, what, you know, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Is it the information, then trust, or is it trust, then the information? Well, you know, in order to build trust, right, you know, in order to build trust, you, you need to build a relationship, right? So with relationship comes with the sharing of information, and the, if the information is true and believable and, and sincere, then trust will, will grow off of that. Mm -hmm. right? and, and what do you think, and, and a lot of you can answer this, um, 
you know, typically, and, and as you said so many times, is management had a history of being in total control. That's how do you let go of that? You know, what was the vehicle to let go of that? Not it, you're still in control financially, et cetera, but how do you let go of exactly what happens on a day-to-day -day basis in that outlet? One is, you know, just based on the brutal facts, Carol, just, you know, you look at uh, where Beavis was two and a half years ago in the financial reality, uh, management wasn't doing a very good job, you know, and so based on the brutal facts, you know, what do we need to do? Uh, I was fortunate enough to come in this organization with fresh eyes only four years ago, and what I found was a very talented crew that had a lot of passion for the hotel, but they had the wind taken out of their sails because management, frankly, wasn't listening as well as they should have. Mm -hmm. And so we, we just kind of tore down those walls and, uh, you know, started listening to the front line because that's, that's where the truth is, right? mm -hmm. where the rubber meets the road. You know, uh, what is it that we're missing? What, what, what is it that management is not providing? Mm -hmm. Is it the tools? Is it the training? Uh, is it simply uh, the dinner rolls? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, being what they were. Uh, so I, I think, that, I think that's, that, that's how we got to the point we are. Mm -hmm. It's just simply listening uh, and reacting. Uh, you know, to, to uh, very often very good ideas. And maybe this might be a good idea to explain the dinner rolls, the hockey puck. Yeah, why, so, <laughs> why, why do we pick the dinner rolls? You know, dinner rolls, it, it, it's a bit of a metaphor in uh, we had a very poor product. And uh, <laughs> in, in layman's terms, management says, well, this is the dinner roll we have, and that's what you're going to serve, and I really kind of don't care. That's a bit exaggerated, I admit. But that's an example of the type of environment that we lived in back then. Uh, this is what you'll do and that sort of thing. And, uh, we had very good soldiers. So our wait staff, cooking staff, were very good soldiers. Yes, sir, and the people had school. That's not a very good environment. You need an environment where it's a two-way street. I listen, you listen. Together we collaborate. We come up with the way forward. And the whole idea is you want the guests to want to come back. and. Mm -hmm. Even if it's one little thing in their meal that ruins it, it can ruin the whole experience. So because they kept saying, like, I don't like these rolls, and nobody was listening. So, I mean, this, that's what made this committee successful because we, we were able to, look, you got to do something, you know. They're telling us. They're telling us. So you need to listen. You know, so... The, the roles were um, <coughs> hard, correct? They were hard. They were, uh, yeah, it was a poor recipe and poor management of the product. And, yeah, I don't want to go into too many details about the interval. But, again, it's a metaphor of, of uh, this is the way it is and that's what you're going to do. And, obviously, that wasn't very uh, prosperous. <laughs> okay. So, uh, in, in again, we want to look at what happened in that committee. How did it get started? What, what, what were the seeds that began to lead to a fruitful resolution? They well, were, they were, did you have something else going on in this? Um, well, I was going to talk about like when, how Peter was saying, when we had the negotiations and we decided on the committee and then the manager was saying who's going to sit mm -hmm. on the committee. So when it came time, like they picked their people, which was, of course, it's going to mm -hmm. be people that have relationship with the food and beverage mm -hmm. that would know the business. And for the employees, what happened was like most of us, like Jack, Jerry, and myself, we have been working at the hotel over 30 years, most of us. And so we've worked in food and beverage, so we wanted someone that had the knowledge of the food and beverage, dealt with the, the guests. And that's how we kind of picked our team on the employee union side. And um, and then the final thing was we said, okay, you guys are going to be on this committee. You need to commit to it. And we all decided, okay, you're going to be on the committee. You need to come to every meeting. And it was just amazing. I mean, I guess because of the, the things that we were able to accomplish, it's like we wanted to come to the meeting, you know. <laughs> it, it was just things were happening. And so you just kept wanting to come to make, see what else we can do, you know. Mm -hmm. And our relationships just become a way of life, yeah. right? I think yeah. we talk openly and, you know, we, we listen to good ideas. Uh, management's very approachable. Uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, very positive relationship. 
you, you just mentioned a very important word, and that is commitment. Uh, and a, a lot of you out there probably know that, well, okay, committees are committees, and you know, you put them together, and they'll last, you're lucky if they last a year, you're lucky if they last six months. With a change in membership, it's, you know, so a lot of, a lot of people have the notion that it could not be sustainable. And a key to sustainability is some constancy in the membership in the committee, but also the commitment to it. Um, you put your, you know, you're really going to do what you say you're going to do. And that reliability also leads to more trust, and that occurred in this committee. So that's an important word that you mentioned, Erlena. Um, now, I've been trying to <laughs> go to this preparing. Um, so is it, is it time for this now? <laughs> OK. Um, so in the, the elements of the committee that led to the success, there were several. First of all, like Erlena said, it was commitment. Like um, Peter and Kevin have been saying, it's, it, it is sharing the information that's necessary. Um, and like Sai has said, it, it was the specific information that was extremely helpful. They could actually see the growth in, in numbers. There was also uh, the training and interest-based. And as you know, those of you who have already used it, and, um, is first, what's the problem? You jointly just define the problem. And the word joint is key. And when you're satisfied with the description of that problem, and then you brainstorm, uh, or you look at the concerns, why are we even dealing with this? Why are we taking all this time and effort um, to try to resolve this problem? And those are the interests. And the folks, everybody, listed charts of interests. And they were taken seriously. And then after that, they brainstormed some options. And this, everybody looked at what was realistic in those options. Um, nobody held anything back in terms of what was realistic and what was already done um, or what couldn't be done for an X reason or maybe it was due to a time frame. You know, we, we, get, we can do that, but we can't do that right away. Um, so the other thing I think that was really important was to set a realistic goal. And realistic is the key word. Uh, not to try to bite off too much. And that's why the focus was on Beavis, as, as, as Sai and, and several of you have already said. But the other thing um, is to set up a program that is a pilot, and pilot is the key word there. It says, all right, we didn't, if it doesn't work, we can always stop it. Or if it, does, if it isn't working, we can correct it along the way. So no one has a crystal ball. No one ever knows what's going to, you know, the perfect formula. But the pilot said, OK, we'll give it so much time and see what happens and monitor the growth and see if we can get some comfort out of the results. So that, that setting a realistic goal is really important. Um, I think Kevin has said many times improvements don't happen overnight. So the idea of having, again, not only a realistic goal, but a realistic time frame. And then they chose their trial um, subject. So those, those uh, worked for this committee. There will be others, other, and those of you who want to put into the chat room other things that have worked for you, that's, you know, we're welcome, uh, more than welcome to see that. Um, so what was the overall committee objective? And Kevin's going to tell us about that. Yeah, so so uh, again, you know, we picked Beamons as priority one, just given the financial reality of uh, the, the restaurant back in 2013. And over two years, uh, you know, over two years, you know, our relationship, you know, listening, reacting, setting goals, setting priorities, acting on them, uh, it led to these, these positive results. And <clears throat> when we first started talking back in 2013, uh, you know, the union side was basically saying, uh, hey, hey, guys, you know, we, we, there's just poor communication. Uh, there's the inability to, to, uh, to change. There's just a lot of stress. Uh, you know, on the floor because of the seating patterns just being what they were. Uh, the restaurant hadn't had a, uh, a facelift, if you want to call it that, in over 20 years. Uh, the menus were a bit outdated, a bit 1980s, if you will. Uh, the menu itself was nothing that spoke a lie. It, it was a menu you would find in South Chicago, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. um, you know, service patterns were lacking. Check averages were low. Uh, our bread program was, was awful. So, again, just by setting this down, you know, listening, we had a long list, but, you know, where do you start first? And we just started prioritizing, started chipping away at that. So, 
you know, we, we, we were reacting with uh, each of our goals that we would set. We were held accountable. So if we set on, you know, uh, meeting number five, that we would accomplish these things by meeting number six, we were held accountable, and, and, uh, and rightfully so. <coughs> so early on, after about three months, you know, uh, the, the trust was getting better. Uh, I think our communication was more open, more honest. Uh, momentum started just building. Morale was improving. Uh, Buy-in on both sides, management side and labor side. Uh, it was obvious that, hey, uh, management is listening. Management is willing to put their wallet where it needs to be. Uh, management is genuine in making these change. Uh, the union goes back to their, their staff and to say, guys, you can see, you know, that this has happened. The relationship has changed. Um, there's many, many things, that, hundreds of things that we've done during our two-year relationship to achieve uh, our break-even goal. But some of the some of the things that include, you know, seating patterns. Uh, the union was saying, quite frankly, you guys are seating way too hard during sunset hours. So we started looking at that, looking at industry standards, and uh, finding out, in fact, we were sitting too hard. So, you know, we, we made adjustments. When you look at the menu, uh, again, the menu is kind of South Chicago. So we wanted to, to make it look like we were in Hawaii, for goodness sake. So we started uh, working on that. When we were designing the menu, too, uh, you have to take into consideration everyone, not just the service side, but the cook side. So if you have five men on the line, women, uh, you got to make sure that that menu is balanced out so no one station is getting so far behind that the other stations can't keep up and that sort of thing. So we took that into consideration. And all these, every, changes, every change that we made, from menus to lighting to seating to wall sconces to paint color, we got to the committee before we ever made that purchase. We just got, hey, we're thinking about this. What do you think? We're thinking about that. What do you think? We're thinking about moving the menu in this direction. Do you agree? And uh, and again, that just was, was dictating the way forward. Uh, other benefits out of this that, that, uh, that the committee created was Beavis to Go. Before, we didn't have a to-go program inside the guest rooms. And now we have a very successful program that grew sales by 15%. Um, you know, the environment, again, back to you know the lighting, the painting, the new furniture, that sort of thing. Uh, we, the hotel, knew that this investment had to be made. We just didn't do it blindly. Again, we just consulted uh, the Food and Beverage Success Committee, and they were involved with every single one of these decisions, including the new, new plates, new utensils, uh, and the <laughs> back to the dinner roll. We no longer have that dinner roll, but we do have breadsticks for sale. So if you're ever here at Beavis, I invite you to join one of those. Um, but the benefits are enormous. We, you know, uh, a relationship greatly improved. Uh, the financials for Beavis greatly improved. Uh, morale greatly improved. Sick leave went down. Uh, you know, work with comp claims uh, went down. It's just just a better climate for every single one of us, including our guests. Uh, as you just flip to the next couple of slides here, I think we have a, a picture of what we used to look like before. And if you look to your left, you can see uh, a restaurant that was literally a uh, Mediterranean-style restaurant uh, built 22 years ago. Um, I'm sure it was a good decision back then, but you know, it outgrew itself. And so now you can see the picture on the right, albeit not a very good one, uh, you know, it's, it's much more live. You know, it's, it's much more a destination now. Our guests come to Hawaii, you know, they, they, they want to they experience Hawaii. So I think we now deliver that product. <laughs> and the menus, uh, you know, we just had to come up with a format that was a little less pretentious. Uh, when we first got together, we had the old book style. A very large book and uh, a very small menu, quite frankly, uh, as far as guest selection. And now, a menu is greatly expanded. Uh, we went with the card sauce because, again, that presents casualness, fun, uh, less pretentious. Uh, we think it was a good format. And you can see it's colorful. And uh, again, if you, if you just look at each of the items, it really gives you a sense of presence that I'm here on vacation in Hawaii. Okay. Okay. You know, one thing um, before we get into the um, the monthly results, there was one thing about that you guys talked about a lot, and that was accountability. And one of the elements in that accountability was how do you get on a, a, in an individual area staffing appropriate staffing? And I I know Greg, you you um, addressed this, and every day you had meetings in the morning. 
to who in the staff is to the progress of things. And can you tell us how right. that worked for you? So presently, uh, well, in the past, we really never had a pre-service meeting prior to our opening. And so in this committee, we we made time. We actually adjusted schedules to bring staff in early enough to be able to do a, a complete pre-service meeting <laughs> and update the staff on our successes, our failures, uh, our, and things that we need to work on. We'd also cover the daily specials and anything else that we were um, needed to uh, cover. So it, it has helped the staff um, understand what's going on in the hotel, help the staff understand what's going on in our department at Peebles and the challenges that we have to, uh, ahead of us and what, what kind of changes that we need to make. Um, and it really has improved morale. We open it up also during the, during the meeting for feedback from the staff so that we can take that feedback and bring it to this committee and discuss it and try to make changes and try to make things better. And it has actually made a big difference with, uh, with the staff at the Um, You know, one of the other things, and, and Sai, you may be able to address this as well as Greg or anybody, and it is to try to bring the best out of um, anyone, best production out of anyone. So there was a way to track who was great at desserts, who was great at the appetizers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that had a big impact. Um, you want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, you're right, Carol. We started tracking uh, ratios. So um, what I mean by that is, you know, you, you can simply look at, you know, how many guests each server is, is uh, serving, and you look at the ratios. How many cocktails to, you know, these guests are we serving? How many desserts are we serving? Again, you know, the, the uh, increasing the check average is, is in large part part of the uh, our success story. And once we started tracking that, uh, it was used as a training tool. You know, you could see, you know, the people that fell to the bottom. You know, it wasn't a disciplinary tool. It was, hey, these bottom five folks uh, need our attention. Uh, maybe it is they don't know or they're a little nervous about it, so let, let, let's train them. Let's work on that. Uh, and that was, a, that was a major driver in increasing our guest check. If I could jump in, and along with that, I think what really helped, and again with the partnership, it's not only the Kevins or the Greggs from the management side saying, hey, look at this. We've got Jack, who's boots on the ground, server there. He, he was instrumental, part of that team there, operationally speaking to the wait staff about, hey, guys, look at this. This is, you know, we're heading in the right direction. And as Erlena said, it became believable when they're hearing it from their membership. So, you know, that, that really mm -hmm. made it a cohesive effort. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, girl, uh, so this is a really good discussion. And uh, there, it, it prompted a couple questions from, um, from the attendees, and I think it's a good point. Um, we just want to be clarified. So management brings the potential changes to the committee, right? That's good information sharing. And then those changes are then discussed, and then the committee makes rec recommendations about those suggestions. Is that correct? We just want to make sure we're, we're on track. That is correct, yes. Okay. And it sounds like you, it wasn't just management, but there were also people, boots on the ground, the servers. And then the next question is, we want to just see from that, how did the, com the, the committee communicate its results and the decisions out to the union mem membership as well as to the hotel management? And these, these questions came from Philip. So during our pre-service meetings at Divas, it would be communicated to the staff of what we had discussed and how we were going to implement things. And then we would get feedback from staff uh, if they had a better idea, and then we, if they did, we'd bring it back to the committee and we'd present it to them. I was going to, let me add to that as well. What we did also, we, uh, at, at, at one point, we even published a uh, FMB success newsletter that we got yeah. after they got they had a bargaining unit to uh, nice. all the FMB staff. And we actually even surveyed some of the, uh, the Beavis workers to make sure that they were getting the information and if they had any comments or concerns that they wanted to share with the committee. So it couldn't have been just the committee by itself. It had to be, we had to do it in totality, but the committee was the, the heartbeat. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's excellent. So I think the last question we have um, in, in the same result, from those suggestions, um, were there any conflicts that were being made uh, to the terms of the party's uh, CBA? And if so, how did you address those? 
as a result of the suggestions being made. I don't think we've ever experienced any conflict. No, it's a very mature relationship. Yeah, well, yeah. had an opinion, you know, it, it was shared. Well, right. and right. for the union side, everything, um, it, it more or less because it wasn't, we weren't doing like internal, you know, complaints between problems. We, we were just trying to improve the atmosphere. So it, it, it worked out well because we were making our job easier and making it better for the guests by doing this together because like especially Jackie, he, he works at Divas, he knows us, he's been working there for so long that he knows what the, the guests give him feedback. And then he was instrumental in taking what we discussed and take it to his coworkers and let them know, look, this is what we're doing, is this okay? Yeah, and then I was going to add, and you'll see it when Sai talks about the, uh, the financial results. You know, it, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't purely subjective. A lot of it, we could see the results of our progress as the, as the months went by. So we all knew that we were headed in the right direction. So even though, even though if one of the committee members had a doubt, uh, you know, we, everything that we did was, was based on the, total, on the committee as a total, as a whole, right? So we, we, you know, if we had it, you know, one of the things with the committee with the ground rules, you know, we said what we, we said what we had to say, but we were respectful in saying it, right? Yeah, that was one of the ground rules. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, from the start, everybody understood the committee was not the same as negotiating at the bargaining table. Um, any bargaining took place at bargaining for the contract. This was a committee that met on a specific issue to resolve it. Things like staffing, per se, were not considered bargaining. It was considered working out an issue to make staffing appropriate for that area. And that's exactly what a committee like this is set up to do, um, the permissive you know, issue of staffing. Uh, does that answer the question, uh, do you think, out there? It's, it's, it seems like it. OK. Um, it does. Thank you, guys. And, it's, and and again, I mean, the comment is just a great communication feedback loop that you guys set up. It's awesome. And, and one more thing um, to be more specific is, Erlena, you were addressing how to get the information out to bargaining unit members. But also, at the committee level, you guys were able to bring issues here as well as management. I mean, it, was, it really was a two-way street. I mean, and that was a very specific statement. Is that right? Did you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. OK. Yeah, and I'd also like to clarify, you know, in the beginning we said, you know, if we had management issues, we would bring them to the committee. But the same was just as true yeah. on the other side. Senior yeah. issues was also presented to the committee. Yeah. So it was, it was a real uh, partnership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a, yeah. OK. <coughs> so, Sai, we're ready for you. All right. Well. As you can see, it's been looming up there for a bit now. And, <laughs> <laughs> yes. and you know, when, when we first started this, I mean, look at it. And we're talking about losing $100,000 a month in this particular Beavis restaurant. Again, I want to make a point overall as a food and beverage department, they were doing fine. They were profitable. But this was one specific department. So when we started this, you know, admittedly, it just sounds like such a daunting number. How are we going to break even? But I will say through the partnership and, and, and it's everything explained, back and forth, talking, and, and it took a while. But you know what? After time, hey, we chipped away. Still at $65,000, okay, better than $100,000. We're making progress, but far from there. So that, that was like six months later. You know, the good news about this is nobody gave up. We continue to talk. We continue to look at, I mean, we're meeting every month. And yes, you know, we can see ups and downs. And you know what? So then, another five months later, we were so close. I mean, we're, out, we're close to celebration here, you know, a year later. So was progress made? Absolutely. You know, so all of a sudden, it, it was within reach. And finally, you know, in December 2015, as Kevin mentioned earlier, 
oh my goodness, we actually hit it. The, there was a small profit made in Divas. We hit our goal. So that, that was huge for the committee to say, taking it from such a big loss, doing the right things, the partnership there, yes, it, it's a tough, tough road, but look, it, it actually worked. So that, that was huge for us. And I do want to say, somebody's probably going to ask, oh, was this the only time? No, it continued on until, you know, again, a business model for us changed. But, you know, we are on track. You know, we had some, uh, you know, without getting into much details, we had some wage corrections, you know, hotel-wide. And for the first time, really, is, you know, we're comparing the hotel wages to specifically Waikiki. And they say that, hey, the other hotels. So we changed our business model. We're very good for the employees. People got more money. But that changed, you know, uh, some of the results. But so we started again, and believe me, we are still on the road to success. Yeah, we're doing very well. And the initial was to break even, but you actually yep. made what? Yeah, and, and, and we've continued. We've had we've continued on, and we're we're on the right track. Yeah, let me, let me restate. You know, this isn't specific to Beavis. We saw these same financial results throughout food and beverage. Right. And again, record revenues, record profits. Mm -hmm. So again, it's all back to this uh, open relationship that we have. Okay, and so now we're on some takeaways <laughs> to kind of collect all good points and, and look at them right here. And so the first one, um, Kevin, you want to speak to that? Yeah, you know, it, it's communication is essential. Uh, again, you heard us talk earlier about you know, early on in our relationship was just basic brutal facts, uh, and here is the plan, just transparency, financial transparency. This is the boat we're all in, <laughs> and we need to keep this boat afloat, otherwise it sinks. So together we work, we establish goals, and we are a success story. Jack? No, Elena. Elena. So, oh, sorry, Elena. So partnership, yes, is very critical. Because we, it worked because we worked together to solve the issues, even though a lot of times it was a lot of discussion. It may take one or two meetings before we could solve, you know, because we try things, and maybe we'd have to tweak it a little. But it, it's a, a partnership, without this partnership of us working together, I don't think we would have reached a success. And, you know, we've shared information with each other. And again, where I sit from the accounting department, yes, there's a lot of numbers that, you know, every meeting that, that we've come together, the financials for the restaurant and beyond, would go out. So again, you know, there, there were no secrets. You know, we had a problem, we were addressing the problem, and everybody, it, it was put on the table. So again, it, it, I think it was huge that we all got to see where we're at all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, one of my takeaways is, uh, is not to be afraid of failure. You know, you got to be, you got to be, uh, you got to be willing to change, right? And change is sometimes very really difficult, especially in the government. And uh, so it's okay to put your foot on the gas, right, and, and move forward. And but we, the committee, the purpose of the committee is like we were all okay, and we knew up front if something didn't work, we could change, we could change course real quickly, unlike the dinner roll, right? So, uh, so and we don't do that. And and, um, and now that we're comfortable with change. You know, we're continuing to use, uh, we're, we're, we're already in that mode. So as, as we go along, if we need to make a change, we'll make a change, no problem. Mm -hmm. Well, we're also helping each other, you know, as we come to, come to our meetings, we get the positive attitude and stuff like that, and, and exchange, you know, ideas and information. And that way we take it back to my crew, where I'm sort of like the leaders, and I'm the senior weight help there. Um, talk to them, get the word out, see what they say, and they come come back and give you the feedback and all that stuff. So, with um, my positive energy towards to them, kind of builds up a little morale. By the end of the night, we get the positive, you know, we get feedback too, and then kind of brings it to the table, and then we just share with one another. You know, so I have to do it positively. Communication is all it is, just to build the morale. So speaking of feedback, you know, it's very important to listen to our guests and employees' feedback. As the first, first point says, communication is essential. Communication actually goes both ways. It goes from us to them and from them to us. So 
um, listening to our guests and employees' feedback is very important, and then reacting to it and trying to make the best decisions from those from that feedback. And from this committee, what I've noticed is that each member, they come together, they are committed to all the meetings that we have been through. And it shows that we wanted to try to make an effort. Each member came with their ideas, their own suggestions, and challenges that we had along the way. But most of all, they came in here, they cared with one another, and they walked away with this with respect. And that was very good with each of us. And we're able to communicate, like as everyone said, communication is key. So when we communicate with each other, we have the respect to respect what they have to say when they bring to the table and walk away again with respect. So kind of, we're going to, uh, these are the final words so far, but we really want to welcome questions from everybody. I think in addition to the takeaways that the committee has just shared with you, I think that this process continues after success. It doesn't really stop um, because there's always future successes that are possible. And there's going to, like, just like life, there's ups and downs. There will be other issues to resolve, and it's just in, in general better to resolve them together. Um, I think the other thing is serious, really serious consideration of ideas, no matter whether anybody internally thinks, oh, how the heck are we ever going to do that? There was serious consideration of the ideas and among the staff, a lot of feedback from the staff. And then also there was a sharing, an honest sharing of obstacles as well as solutions. Um, you know, when the rubber hits the road, unless you're talking reality and unless you're talking honestly, you're not gonna, it's not going to work. But somehow, after building a, flat, a platform for that, um, this committee was able to, you know, actually use that process and share concerns and share um, solutions. So I, this may sound too, you know, too good to be true, but it really happened. And it can happen anywhere. <laughs> And this was a combination of federal and private sector to boot. So they were very different interests in the beginning and a very different way of working together in the beginning. Um, and there was, you know, the success and mutuality. So are there, please, um, yeah. questions you want. Yep, I've got a few of them. Um, personally, I think you were kind of just touching on that. Uh, we just want to get an idea of, um, of it, are there any Anyone that was previously skeptic about the committee or the process, are there still any lingering skeptics around there, or did you do a lot to kind of dispel that? Uh, you know I mean? yeah. I'll, I'll answer that question. <laughs> 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 yeah, and I told the committee that too. I said, I didn't believe it was going to work. You know, I didn't believe we were ever going to see but I wasn't going to call them out. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, uh, so I'm, I'm a believer now. <laughs> was there any, um, like, resistance, like resistance from either side in the concept of the partnership to begin with? Other than just skepticism, was there... Well, and, <laughs> Jumped in through the nego and, you know this was a negotiated thing. The committee was through negotiations, so okay. it wasn't that you know it wasn't come to the table. Here it is. Yep, we're going to do it. There was back and forth again, both questions from the union and the management side until we uh, agreed to whatever you saw up here that the, the language is is there. But that had to be agreed upon. So that was uh, number one. Yeah. That's okay. True. And then, as far as when you were joining it, was it really, did it really just come down to the monetary issues um, with Beavis, or were there other concerns, like turnover, grievances? Is yeah, that factored into the formation? Absolutely, yes. Uh, morale was low. Morale was low, uh, okay. satisfaction. Yeah, but considered also in that to make sure that the guests are going to be happy with the decisions that we make. And. Were there other besides the monetary gain or, you know, the breaking even and, and even more, get, turning a profit, have you seen a, a you know, a, a fewer or change in the amount of grievances? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, oh. It, it, it's all related. You know, business, Beavis is a success story because of, uh, you know, our staff attitude, the staff buy-in, you know, the staff dedication or the team dedication. So th that's how we got from here to there. 
Okay. And then as far uh, more about the process of the, the formation of the, um, the committee members, how um, can you talk a little bit about how the committee me members themselves were selected? I know that a lot of people are coming here from different agencies and organizations, and they kind of get faced with the same issue of there are great people out there that would be good on a committee, but there's overload. They already have a lot of work to do. Um, they may not have the time for additional duties. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, on the management side, it's a bit eclectic. So we brought in the operators, like myself, again, food and beverage. We brought in our, our financial uh, guru here, Cy. We brought in our HRO director. Uh, we brought in some other operators, like Lavana from uh, one of our restaurants, Greg from the other restaurant. Uh, so, yeah, we tried to be as eclectic as we could on the management side. And then on the labor side. So on the labor side, see, what you see here is not all the union, union um, employee members because they couldn't make it. But we actually had more. I mean, it looks like it's mostly management. What, what we did was we picked the people that not only were involved, knew the union side, they were involved in the union. They worked here for, like I said, you know, most of them over 30 years. We had, like, Jack, we have Rowena, who is in here, and Kevin. Rowena is a server, Jack a server, Kevin a cook. They all work at Bebus. So we had the different sides because you got the front and the back. And then myself, who's been a server at Coco's for a long time, and we have also Linda, who is, is not here. She's, she's our union representative from Local 5, but she also cooked. She was a cook at Holico. I mean, she still is technically a cook at Holico. So we had all these different areas where people, because you see things differently. If you don't, you know, I don't really know all the jobs that the cooks do or what happens in the kitchen. So it was really a really good mix because we have the front and the back of the house, you know, on the employee side, and then we have the management that are all involved in the food and beverage. That was on the culinary side, but we also have for the beverage side. This is Jerry. Oh, Jerry, I'm sorry, no, Jerry. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, Jerry and Jerry, the Jerry, beverage yes. side, too, so yes. you have to uh -huh. keep them in. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry, I forgot. Yes, it's the <laughs> beverage side, because I'm focused on Viva. Yes. The very side was Jerry, who's a server. She's been a long time employee, and she's been involved in the union. There's also Steve, who is in here today, but he was also very much involved in the committee. And, and then we did have the um, beverage manager who also attended the meeting. So we had all these different people that was involved in food and, food and beverage, and we put our ideas together. So that's how it worked. Yeah, it's not, I was going to offer one other piece of advice. What we've done work. Uh, I don't think anyone said it today. Was we've been doing this for three years. First two years, we've been doing it monthly, religiously, every uh, once a day, every month for the first two years, and then we we uh, we altered it to every other month thereafter. But I said one thing that seemed to help was that we. we we learned very quickly we had the right people at the table, but we kept the same uh, people at the table. So a lot of the people that you see today on the screen are the same people that were here during day one of the first committee meeting. So okay. having that knowledge and familiarity and that relationship helped a lot. All right, that's awesome. So it, it does sound, uh, you guys are still in effect. The committee itself is still in effect, right? I think you just said. And then we just, so other than the food and beverage areas, do you look at other working conditions too, like workplace safety and hospitality services in the committee? Yeah, well, since, you know, uh, Beavis, you know, we met our goal, again, December 2015. <clears throat> and after that, you know, we started broadening, uh, uh, well, we started broadening uh, different obstacles. Uh, so we started concentrating on, our bars, we started looking at uh, Coco's restaurant, uh, we started looking at other areas within food and beverage. But, the, but the, and to answer your question, we could look at other areas like uh, safety, I mean we could certainly look at safety, but the title, I mean the, the, during the negotiation with title, we agreed that we were going to uh, form and use the Food and Beverage Success Committee, so it's really the emphasis is on food and beverage. Oh. Okay, so I got that. So, and I had the question wrong. I'm sorry. There was a clarification. So, it wasn't the, the food and beverage committee. Will you guys do whole other committees like workplace partnership, workplace safety partnership committee, 
Um, they are safety committees. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and there, so there's a question for Carol out here. So we know that you focus on interest-based bargaining um, for this particular situation. And is, is that a process that you use for all committees or just some? And if so, how do you decide which issues to use interest-based for? How do you make that determination that interest-based bargaining is appropriate? Uh, well, yeah, I would say that probably 90%, 99% of the committees that I work with, I do use interest-based problem solving. I meet with folks prior to the first meeting so that everybody understands what that means and, and, and is willing to use it once they hear that it's not a death knell and that they could always backtrack if they have to, um, but they're fine. Um, the... the what, you asked a lot of questions in that one, so would you want to tell me which ones I did not answer yet? No, I think we actually, um, but no, I think, I think you covered everything. Or, well, well, how do you decide? I think maybe you may not have answered how do you decide. Are there factors you look at? Oh, or do um, you just kind of start off with IBV, interest rate bargaining? Well, first of all, in that prior meeting, I do an assessment in my own mind, and then from that assessment, I ask questions. Uh, to make sure I'm not off base. So the questions are, what is it you want to accomplish? If we're going to get together, what is it that you want to accomplish? Union, what is it you want to accomplish? Management. And then I, then what do they think is the best vehicle? And nine times out of ten, what happens is they say, we need to be able to talk to each other. We haven't even had that. So then I talk to them about using interest-based problem solving, explain it, and say, well, here's a way to go about that. Um, and then we meet with the whole committee, and the committee decides, is it going to be an issue-focused <coughs> committee, or is it going to be a multiple-issue-focused committee? Um, do they want this to last? Uh, what, is it, what is it they really want out of this? And I honestly say, and this is with the um, healthcare institutions or businesses, it's they want it to last. They're sick and tired of not being able to talk to each other. So it's a broad-based committee. The issues are many. Um, and they, what they do in the first meeting is line up the issues that have been bothering them and then secondly prioritize those um, and then attack so-called the first priority first. And the priority is determined to be is it urgent or is it just a monumental problem? And either one of those would say this is your first priority and then we'll just work down the list. I, really, 99% I, of it is multi-issue in the committee. And what surfaces in the priority is a focused issue. So with this committee, um, it was very clear from the beginning that it was food and beverage. What was also clear was that it could expand to other issues as well. Since they already had a good working relationship, it was good to jump all over that. Um, one more thing I, I remember in a lot of our discussions is, and I, I follow through, you know, as, as much as I can, and this was a joy, I mean absolute joy, um, you know, to come to each time. Um, but one of the things, too, there was sort of a safety issue with the, the one of the areas because the birds kept breaking through the fence, right? And that was a problem <laughs> because you don't want bird poop um, where, you, you know, most people don't want that. And th that, it was a vision, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so that was, you know, a, a tangential safety issue, but, the, you know, the, the group, the committee just jumped right in and resolved that as well and got updates on the progress, you know, are, are the pigeons out or in, <laughs> you know, so, and they, yeah, they expanded. Yeah, um, and it wasn't specifically only to Bebus because it was happening. Yeah at the beverage, like Jerry would bring it to us, like, you know, they're, they're all over, they're eating the food that the people leave because they, 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 they can purchase food from the snack bar and they bring it to their table and then the birds are all over and then in Cocos we have the birds also which they're trying to, so we, not, we did concentrate on Bebas but we did bring up other things that was hotel-wide within the food be food and beverage, and we were able to discuss mm -hmm. those things also. Yeah, and resolve them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's no longer yes. an issue, so it's, it's excellent. Is it, does uh, that 
Yeah, I've got, it does. I've got one more follow-up for you. So you're facilitating these meetings using interest-based problem solving. Is that right, Carol? Yeah, for the most part. After a while, okay. I don't have to stand there and, and, you know, I turned it over to Peter as well at some point because I think you, you just have to. You know, you have to give okay. the facilitation of the committee over to uh, members of the committee. And the, I mean, I, I facilitated for quite some time, though. I think it was about a year and a half, mm -hmm. something like that, maybe even longer. Um, but but ultimately, and a lot of times I turn it over much, much, much sooner than that. Um, but but what's, what's really good is the committee should take control of their own committee, uh, ultimately. I think that's really important. Okay, and it looks like we've got one final question, um, and that's regarding uh, were there any changes in leadership? I'm sorry, were the changes in leadership in both management and union that catalyzed the formation of the initial committee? Hey, I can, you may answer that. I'll answer that. There was changes. We, we, do, we do have changes in leadership. So in the Halico Hotel is, uh, is uh, you know, we have, unlike a lot of other places that I know of, the Halico Hotel has very low turnover. People, tend, you know, like Helena said she's been here 42 years. They're usually unheard of in an MWR activity anywhere within the Army and Department of Defense. So, and we have a, many, many people have been here like they're over 30 years and 25 years. It's just the norm. Then the same goes true with leadership too. And leadership kind of stays put. But during, uh, you know, during, uh, I would say, during the formation of, we started the committee in December of 2012 or 13? 13. 13. 13. 13. So it was agreed to like in May 2013. <laughs> so we did have changes in leadership. We did have a, a new general manager for the hotel. We brought in a fresh way of thinking about things. Um, and Kevin is relatively new himself in food and beverage. The part of, we've had other food and beverage chefs, food and beverage oh, directors sure. come in. We have a new executive chef that's been here how many years? Two and a half. Two and a half years. <clears throat> and what we look at is when we when we hire people, we're looking at people who are not who are who are not going to stay with the norm. We want fresh ideas. It's, it's in food and beverage, I think, and or in any business, I'm, I'm sure. Any business, you can't. You got to continually progress and develop and stay up with the, uh, stay up with uh, what industry is doing. So you got to do that. If you if you if you don't think outside the box, I think you're you're you won't be around long. If that's the best way to say. Uh, and I think there were some um, <coughs> different members representing the union per se that joined the committee and supported it. Um, so I think that was important too. I, I think the most important point though is if there can be some consistency, it really helps. If there's a total turnover, then what the um, committee needs to do prior to leaving is really brief and introduce the newcomers and also stay in a meeting so that these newcomers can understand their roles. Otherwise, it, it goes down the drain. And I've seen too many efforts be lost unnecessarily because of that. There's always the issue of wanting to uh, show your point of view for the new person, and that's valid, but that would be taken into consideration in any turnover anyway if the process is working. So uh, the consistency is really, really important. That's true. I think those are really good points. Um, do you guys have any final? I think we we don't have any more questions from the audience. I think they were very good questions, and you guys did a wonderful job of addressing everything. And I just want to point out too that you guys, um, you know, you guys should look back at the video because it's just the synergy and the energy between you all there at the hotel is it just shows. You know, you guys, you have the PowerPoint. We saw the results, but really we can see how well you guys work together. Um, just just sitting here in, in the room and, and that, you know, that, that says speaks volume. And we really, really appreciate you guys taking the time today uh, to share your success and, you know, the trajectory of that partnership uh, with us today and, and answering our questions so well. Did you guys have anything else that you want to add? Uh, yeah, what do I want to add? I'm just, I'm just so proud to be a part of this committee. Uh, I just love our relationship. I love how open it is. I love how frank it is. Uh, I love it when 
any level of our staff would just come up to me and say, hey, Kevin, I got an idea, or hey, did you see this, or I've got a safety concern over here. I love having that relationship because that's what I need to hear. I need to stay in tune with that front line. Yeah. And I love these guys. It was really wonderful experience, I have to say, too. And thank you, Crystal and Lou Ann and, and headquarters to even make this possible. No, thank you guys. Thank you guys. You guys are the ones that made it possible. We wouldn't have a story to tell if it weren't for you. So uh, we really thank you guys for doing this. I do want to point out, you know, that um, we we here at the FMCS would love to help anyone out there with any of their their um, you know with a partnership or some or anything of that nature. If you look in the chat box, we do have um, a link to see first where you can reach out to a local mediator, a local Carol. Um, uh, so to speak, there we there are all over the United States, um, and and waiting to talk to you about some some ways that we can work together. I also want to point out under that there's a link to our survey monkey. We want to see how how we're doing. Um, if there's anything other than obviously our technical difficulties, and thank you all so much for bearing with us uh, through that that we can do for success stories such as these or anything else you may want to hear from the SNCS. Um, and then finally, if you look over to the files pod. You can download the SMCS services brochure to get more information about this. We do plan to make this recording available, um, so just stay in touch. We do have everyone's email, and we'll alert you to how you can look at this and maybe share it um, with your colleagues or anyone else you think um, could, could, could take a few minutes and really listen to a great story. Um, with that being said, again, I just have to thank everyone out there at, at, at Holly Coa, everyone out there and throughout the nation for sitting in on this webinar. And you guys enjoy the rest of your Thursday afternoon. Thank you Thank so you. much. Aloha. 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 <laughs>